So, Sham, how will this partnership work? Thank you for having me, Emily. Yeah, this partnership is very exciting. Uh, it represents our first major expansion into Korea here. We're working with uh, Hyundai Heavy here to drive the digital transformation of their entire business. This is the largest shipbuilder in the world. Uh, just true feats of engineering, the scales of these ships that they're producing, a new ship every eight months. And everything from how do I produce these ships better, faster, cheaper? How do I manage them? in the aftermarket once we've sold them. And I think perhaps most excitingly, how do we introduce autonomy into uh, ship transportation today? 80% of all accidents are actually human error. Uh, and this is, this is a big opportunity for the world, for commerce, for, for economies. What does this mean for Palantir's business and how will it help you expand internationally? Well, it really builds on our track record of working with industrial companies. You know, I would say Skywise, the aviation ecosystem that we built with Airbus was quite revolutionary. It brought together the 15 largest suppliers in aviation with 150 airlines. Uh, it generates billions of dollars of value for the aviation ecosystem. We brought that to automotive and we're super excited to bring that to the shipping industry, both on the manufacturing of ships, but also the transportation, the execution, the operation of these vessels as well, and all the participants in that ecosystem. Well, and speaking of manufacturing, how are supply chain pains impacting Palantir and impacting your clients, given the number of industries that you touch, including now building ships? As you know, Emily, we work across 40 different industries, and we've had a big role in helping companies with uh, supply chains from the very beginning of the pandemic, like helping 3M produce PPE, uh, helping keep hospitals open and running. One of the interesting realities now with Omicron is that you're seeing that it's not just about part availability, it's about people availability. Uh, you see that hospitals are struggling to have full levels of staffing. And that is actually, in a holistic sense, a supply chain problem. So we are helping people manage parts and people together. Uh, and I think a big part of that is companies are realizing that these kind of cute sayings of just in time or just in case, these are, these are just cute sayings. The reality is that managing your supply chain is a software problem. And, and we are bringing that software to the front lines to help them do that. You actually have a partnership with Merck to try to address some of these issues, the chip shortage in particular. What are you learning from that? Yeah, uh, Merck is one of the largest suppliers of material to the semiconductor industry. And, and clearly the, the crisis in semiconductors now, we've worked with industrial companies as they kind of work around this. But uh, Merck and Palantir are joining forces to address the problem head on, really thinking about how we optimize quality and yield and get the most out of the chips that we are producing, the silicon we are making, uh, and get them to the most effective places. And part of being at CES for us here is to meet with the semiconductor manufacturers and, and start seeing how we can help them drive quality and results immediately. You're at CES actually this year. Uh, unlike many companies and executives that decided to present virtually, I know that EVs are a big theme there. You've also got a partnership with Wejo, which is a connected car platform. Where are you expecting to see the, the most innovations on the EV front? What are you looking ahead to? I, I really think about about is mobility, broadly speaking, everything from autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, the connected vehicle data, you're seeing a big convergence there. And, and one of the huge themes that has for us has been leveraging the edge AI capabilities that we've been developing over the last few years. All of these connected devices are generating so much data people are realizing that that's actually a problem. It's too much data to bring back from the vehicles themselves to the cloud. So how do you push the analytics to the edge? How do you start using those analytics in simulation? You know, we think about the metaverse from a consumer's pers perspective most of the time, but really one of the more exciting applications are these digital twins, or as Weijo calls it, the, the, the uh, meta twin that allows cities to look at and simulate what would happen if they changed how their traffic lights work based on the on this connected vehicle data that's streaming off or allows EV manufacturers or AV uh, autonomous vehicle companies to actually do more simulation to understand how they can get more safety under more environments and bring those to market more quickly. And, and we think there's gonna be huge opportunity in that space. Uh, they, they launched their neural edge product uh, at CES and, and Foundry is a big part of that. There's been some debate, Sham, about whether CES should have moved forward in person at all, given the spike in COVID cases and some skepticism in general about how relevant CES still is. What's your perspective on that, given you're there uh, at the conference this year? How much value um, do you think it really still has? 
We've seen great opportunities from being here. Of course, people are being very safe and taking precautions, uh, and that's changed the ways in which people are engaging. But uh, I still see a lot of cutting edge innovation, great opportunities to engage with partners and, and, and build the future together. Now, we're speaking uh, about a year now since Palantir went public. Just looking at the stock, dropped by about 21% over the year, underperformed the S&P. Do you see that turning around in 2022? What's your outlook ahead? We guided in Q4 to 40% uh, growth in 21. Pretty excited about that. Uh, pretty excited about the fundamentals of the business. Over $400 million of cash flow was our guide. Uh, you know, so I think that the business is performing really well. And I, what we focus on is working our tail off to create value every single day. We're doing this for the long term. You think about a great company like Apple. They've been around 45 years. It took them 30 years to create the first $100 billion of value, 12 additional years to create the next trillion, and three years on top of that to create the subsequent two trillion. And so we plan to do this for a long time. We're, we have a monastic focus on creating software that the world needs before the world knows it needs it. Uh, we plan to keep doing that, and we think that will be reflected in the long term. 